First thing you should do is make sure that you've changed your name, put your partner's full name, and filled out this information in the beginning. Once you get that done, then uh, just look on the lab packet and you can find the purpose. It's okay if you copy it directly from the lab packet. Um, then when you get to the procedure, um, the best way to write the procedure is to reference uh, figure one over to the left um, and just say, uh, we set up the 12 reactions as shown below or to the left in figure one and recorded the um, litmus paper and temperature before and after of each one of these reactions and wrote observations down. Um, doesn't have to be very long and then you say um, make one more sentence about part C where we did uh, reaction set up as in figure 2 and we reacted silver nitrate weighed the mass before and after a, a chemical reaction. Um, for this observation table you put your initial temperature here so for example let's say my initial temperature was 20.5 and then my final temperature um, was uh, let's say 28.5 um, then my change in temperature it increased so it's going to be a positive number and it would be 8.0 uh, um, then the li stands for the litmus paper in the beginning on all of these it's going to be pink for all the hydrochloric acids so you can go ahead and put pink down all of them and then uh, for the LF that's your final litmus um, if you added 20 drops of the sodium hydroxide uh, it could have turned blue if you added um, less than 20 drops then it might still have been pink so it depends what happened in your reaction and then observations, this is where you put um, started with two uh, clear colorless liquids and um, added them together. There was no visible reaction, um, but the heat increased and the litmus um, changed color. So you put your observations in there. You can use shorthand. You don't have to write out a sentence for this. Um, so write out your observations in this table. Um, do the same thing for the copper chloride. And then for your mass or your flask for part C in the beginning. Um, and then the mass of the flask before mixing, after mixing, and then what's the change in mass. For your data analysis, this looks complicated, um, but it's meant to save you time. Um, so one of the things that you're looking for for a precipitation reaction is that it's cloudy. And when you look through, um, I chose this picture to show you not because it's correct, um, but because it's easy to see what's cloudy and what made a precipitate. Um, in the case of this reaction, anytime I can't see the bottom because um, there's cloudiness affecting it, like this well, then that's where the reaction happened. Now, th this group flipped. This is actually A1 through 6, and this is B1 through 6. Um, but anytime it looks cloudy in the background, like here, or any of these, those are going to be precipitation reactions. Now notice the difference on this one. The background is clear. Even though a solid was formed, it wasn't formed from two clear solutions because you started with the metal. And the background um, or the solution doesn't have a solid being produced in it. Unlike this is a classic precipitation, what it looks like in the, the background. So when I go back to the lab, I want to delete all the ones that um, did not precipitate. So in the case of hydrochloric acid, A3, there was a cloudy precipitation that happened. In the case of copper chloride, um, you could argue that these three, B4, B5, and B6, all made precipitation reactions. Do this for all categories. So which ones produce gases? Eliminate the ones out of these that um, did not produce gas and you're going to have a list of each reaction that fit in each category by the time you get done. So going to the conclusion, this is where 
all your points pretty much are is in the conclusion. Um, I read the conclusion and I reference back to your data tables to make sure you're drawing the correct conclusions from these. So restate the, the two main purposes. So it's just going through your packet or looking, copying and pasting from the top of this packet. And then um, your first two sentences. Now, the first two sentences, hydrochloric acid was a clear colorless liquid and copper chloride was clear but it wasn't colorless, it was light blue. Um, hydrochloric acid made, um, made the blue litmus paper pink, showing it was acidic, and the copper chloride didn't make it as pink, and some people will say that it's pink, some pe people will say blue. That's because copper chloride is a relatively neutral solution, so um, that's where it starts, is somewhere in between. The third sentence, um, this confuses people, but here's the logic of it. Um, what color is the hydrogen, chloride, and copper? Well, HCl has hydrogen ions and chloride ions in solution, and the whole solution is clear. So that means that neither one of these have color, hydrogen or chlorine. Now we go over to copper chloride. We know the entire solution is blue, so one of these is causing the blue. Well, it wasn't the chloride, otherwise hydrochloric acid would have been blue too. So it must be the copper. That's the logic that you want to use in this sentence. The next paragraph, um, you compare the similarities between uh, the reaction of hydrochloric acid with the three metals. So you look at aluminum, magnesium, and zinc. Those are the reactions in A4, A5, and A6. So go back and reference um, A4, A5, and A6. Look at your observations, look at your picture, um, and see, they all bubbled. So that's what you want to say, every one of them bubbled. Um, you might not have noticed bubbles on the aluminum. That's pretty common because it takes a few minutes for bubbles to even start to form on that. And it's a very slow reaction. But they're all doing the same reaction because they're all producing bubbles. And you want to use your observations to support that. Well, use your temperature, so observations, um, temperature is an observation. So whichever one had the smallest delta T is probably the one reacting the least or the slowest. The one that had the highest delta T is probably reacting the fastest. And then also support that with how quickly it bubbled from your observations. So that's to answer this one. Going down here for the copper chloride's reactivity with metal, you're going to compare and contrast um, how copper chloride reacted with these three elements, aluminum shot and aluminum foil, um, and I should say two elements because it's only two, and zinc. So when you go back to your picture, you're looking at, let's go up here to a different picture, you're looking at these three, one, two, three, um, and this is the aluminum shot, um, and then the aluminum foil, and then uh, this one is the zinc. Now, temperature changes, you'll see a difference. Usually the aluminum foil has a higher change in temperature, and the shot has a much lower change in temperature, even though they're the same element and zinc um, is somewhere in between. It may be a little bit faster at reacting than the aluminum shot is. So they all seem to have the same reaction. There was no, not much bubbling, if, if any at all, but there was um, something growing on all of them, a solid that was forming on them. And then compare and contrast Use your observations from these and the reactions with hydrochloric and metal to compare and contrast the reactions. So the reactions with hydrochloric acid in these metals, um, they all bubbled, whereas with the copper chloride, they all produced a solid. So they reacted differently um, with hydrochloric acid and copper chloride. So you can conclude that it's probably the hydrogen that was reacting with the metals in hydrochloric acid and the copper reacting with the um, metals when you had copper chloride because they didn't react the same way.
if they had reacted the same way, it would have been the chloride that was reacting. Also, um, this sentence is trying to lead you to what happened to the color of the solution. So when you go back and there's one um, group who hadn't finished, uh, this one, um, this group hadn't finished, so we can see the color and it's clear, I mean clear, but it's blue. That's the starting solution. And then when you look at the people that had finished, if you look in the back right beside the middle, it's clear now. It's um, clear and colorless. So somehow the blue has disappeared. Well, where has it gone? It can't have disappeared because of conservation of mass. So the only place that it could have gone is it could be that um, brown solid that's collected. And then give a prediction about what you think the copper chloride would have done with magnesium. We didn't try magnesium with copper chloride, but based on that it did react, to, this copper chloride reacted the same way with aluminum and zinc, you can extend that trend and predict what you think will happen with magnesium. Will it react faster or slower? To predict that, you're going to have to use um, the magnesium um, the observations you made with how the metals reacted with magnesium, which one was the fastest, um, which one was the slowest at reacting out of the three metals.